Hello students, my name is Ms. Chestone, and I'm here to help you with your capstone project. So second quarter, what we want to do with our capstone project is focus in the very first week of the capstone project uh, because you need to prepare well in advance. So this video will be talking you through the research paper and we'll do a second video that bases it on the slides if that's your choice right so if i the first thing i have to do when i'm writing a research paper is i come along here to this area go ahead and stop that music there i come along to my uh, google browser I go to my Google Apps, okay? So if I'm here, I go all the way up to my right hand, click, and I need to go to my Google Drive, or I can go to a new document to write a paper. So if I click into that document, the first thing I wanna do is click blank, right? And the next thing I want to do is click outline for my capstone. So if I'm doing, for example, world studies capstone, um, you do have some choice on the topics, but you can't just choose any topic at all. It has to relate to world studies. So, if you choose something like sewing, um, how does that relate to world studies? I would look at um, philosophers, and if I look at my choices on Edmentum, part of the world studies capstone project has to do with philosophers and revolution. So if I see my slide presentation, the objective is you're talking about an age of revolution and part of the skills for history is to deal with um, the capstone project, right? And where I can get that. The age of enlightenment, the age of industrial revolution, you need primary and secondary sources. So you do need a reference page and you need quotes, very important. So one of the philosophers was Galileo Galilei. Isaac Newton is another one. Napoleon Bonaparte. These are some important figures of the age of revolution. And so what you're meant to do after you take a look at that is you can choose other people as well right? You can choose Karl Marx. You can identify Hobbes and Locke, uh, Leviathan, the two treaties of government. Those are very, all very important. And then you're talking about, you can either take the perspective of Galileo Galilei and pretend that you're him and you can describe yourself, tell all about yourself, your childhood, your teen years, your adult years, your major accomplishments, your legacy, um, how you have affected the future. So if you want to do that, you can. Otherwise, you can talk about, in general, revolution. And you can talk about a specific revolution that has changed the world and changed geography in the umbrella of world studies. Okay. So in that frame, sure, I can go ahead and change that. I can make some of my own points. So if I'm making an outline, the first thing I would do is you need to have an MLA heading. The MLA heading is modern language association. It means we don't just choose any kind of form out of the sky. We have a form that we use. This is the student's name. Okay, oh, I'm gonna get out of my title. And the first thing I would do here is choose my format. 
So one thing we have to do is with your paragraph spacing, you should double space. That's a form, it's an MLA form. The next thing I need to do is change the font to New Times Roman. You can't just choose any kind of font. <laughs> if you're going to college, you can't just choose any kind of font, okay? It has to follow a form. The next thing you're going to do is have it be 12 size. Okay, so once you have the format for your paragraph, you have the New Times and 12 point font. This is the student's name. Okay. And you put the teacher's name. And you put the class. And then you put the date. As most people traditionally, especially in Europe, the way they do that is day, month, year, and it progresses by unit. That's why this is switched. So I know a lot of students get really confused about that. Um, you don't have to be confused if you want to switch it and make it Americanized and put month, day, year. That's fine. It's fine. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I can go to my three dots. I have this very large for you, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. So you're able to um, see in, in a big way. And then I'll get more of my menu here. So when I enter every time, if I set this up correctly from the start, it will automatically do the double spacing for me. If I don't set it up that way from the start, then it's a mess. It's all single spaced. Okay. So now I'm going to center and I'm going to write my outline for world studies. We always center that. That's what this document is. It's an outline. I'm going to enter and then I'm going to go back to my left justification by hitting this button here. And the first thing I should do is have a Roman numeral I, which will be my essential question. So in my essential question, it's what are you writing about? And you should always be writing in the form of a question because it's something that you're interested in. So how did revolution affect geography? How did it affect the people? How did it affect politics? How? It depends on what you would like to study. And you can be very specific. If you are interested in studying revolution in Africa, revolution in Europe, and revolution in Russia, revolution in Japan, revolution in America, you can choose that. So um, it's up to you insofar as we're leaving the topic rather open, but it's not that you can't use a philosopher from the day. So you can say, um, how did, I would always use the word how, because the essay and the research answers the question. That's the point of research. Research answers a question. So you need an essential question to find the answer. <laughs> you can't just randomly write an essay without a question. So how did Galileo, right? Let's use that example. Galileo, Galilei, affect science and the enlightenment revolution. Scientific revolution. That's what's called the scientific revolution. Revolution just means change, right? Okay. A very huge topic, right? So the first thing I would do in my Roman numeral A is I would answer the question, who was Galileo Galilei?
And I would have a quote here. I would um, quote someone who admires him, has researched, has researched him. Well, how do I find that? How do I find that, Miss Jenna? Where do I get that information from? Well, you go along up here. And um, my suggestion is to use sources that are reputable. Sources like National Geographic. Wikipedia is not a source. That's, that's a very changeable source. And schools don't recommend Wikipedia. It's not a reliable source. Just like Facebook is not a reliable source. It's ever-changing and it's full of opinions. So we don't recommend that. But if you go to National Geographic, okay, like a, another kind of source, if you go to the National Geographic channel, that's a good source, right? It's interesting. And you can get, you can look at an entire um, documentary on Galileo. You can even research that. So if I'm looking for a topic and you're interested, in a topic and then soon there will be um, information that will come up about that we have scientific re re revolution if that doesn't come up right away Okay, so if it doesn't come up this way, I can go to um, National Geographic, to my browser, and I can have Galileo. And usually this will come up right away. He's an astronomer, right? So immediately the first thing that comes up is Wikipedia. So that's not a good source. We should not go to that source. You should scroll down. And you can see here um, Encyclopedia Britannica, that's a good source to use. Um, if I come down here and I look at stanford.edu, that's a good source to use. Okay. If I go to the History Channel, that's a good source to use. So that means there are historians that have vetted that. Wikipedia, Wiki, the definition of Wikipedia is that it's ever-changing. So if someone just decides I'm going to um, not like Galileo today, they'll go into Wikipedia and they will change the information about him. So you can't really rely on the information being correct from this location. So what I would do, and there's quotes, there's books, quotes, so what I would do at the same time I'm doing an outline, right? At the very same time I'm doing an outline, I might also consider doing a work cited document side by side. So I'm going to do something that might seem, you know, a little crazy because I'll have two screens side by side here, but don't be disturbed by that. So if I go here and I have a works cited page, works cited, awesome. and even if I take a picture, I still want to be able to cite the source, right? So again, MLA style, so we have to go to format, Double space, New Times Roman, and 12 font. Okay. And then I write here works cited slash references. Means where did I get this? I obviously was not alive during his life, so I can't speak on that with authority, right? It makes no sense. 
So I already found some references on this page I definitely want to use. Encyclopedia Britannica looks like a great source. Discovery, invention, facts, his early life, career, his legacy, all of that is right there for me. So usually on a website, there's something called site. Site means they'll give you an MLA citation, Modern Language Association citation. This is the formal way to cite. And they'll give you a button. All you have to do is copy that, go to your Works Cited page, and then you're going to right click on your mouse and it'll give you a paste button. And then I have the entire um, reference right there. Usually the second line is indented. So I can come along here and I can hit my tab button if I like. Sometimes you have to come here, go to the end of the line and then indent here. Now keep in mind, this is an H. Works cited is usually alphabetical. So you might need to do this a few times. I would say for the purposes of adult ed, we should have at least five sources, at least. You might have three, but five sources is, um, I think that's appropriate. So I have Encyclopedia Britannica. It's great. It's another place for me to get some information. And then I can go back to Plato, Stanford, which is Edmentum, which is what you have already. Okay. So then I'm looking here to find biography, background science. You can see they're already doing the same thing that we're looking for, which is an outline. And then usually here you'll find author and citation. So you're going to click on that button and it's going to ask you about citing the source and how to get that source, how to get the site. Okay. So if it, if you can't find a button that shows about how to cite a source, you can come right here and it says it can be cited here. Okay. This is MLA. So I'm going to go ahead and copy copy, which is uh, right click. I come over here and I'm going to go ahead and add this right click paste. And you can notice that the font did not come with it. The font did not stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and I'm going to change that to Times New Roman and I'm going to make this 12. Make sure this is going to be 12. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to make sure that my second line is indented. It looks like there's some kind of highlighting here. I'm going to go ahead and say no highlighting. I'm going to indent my second line by tabbing over, come here and then tab over so that there's an uh, invisible line right here. And then you can easily see that these are becoming alphabetical. Okay. So that's two. Then I come back over here. Finding the source is very important because then you already have information. Okay. So if I come down here and I see rice, the Galileo Project, Smithsonian. It's great. And it's even talking about my topic, Galileo's revolutionary vision. And that's actually going to assist me um, in my topic. So if I come over here, I'm trying to look for how to cite my source on this particular article. I can scroll down. These are one of the things I would do as an adult is read this article to get the most of that. So this person, Dave Zacks, he wrote this article. So I can look for a way to um, see if he is cited here. I 
don't see that particular citation. So the next thing I do is go up here to the browser. If you don't see it right here to cite the source, then you're going to look here in your browser. Right here in the browser. And how do you do that? You go ahead and grab that. You're going to right click to copy. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it over here. And you'll see that that hyperlink of that website went here. Go ahead and paste. So this is an article. It's a website on an article. That's okay. You can have those as well. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit enter and this will go here. And once I come to the end of this page and hit enter, this is a, a complete hyperlink as one, which I use this. It's a hyperlink. Okay. So those are three sources. So while I am making my outline, I, just, I can work on these two documents together. And that's one skill that's really helpful because then as I'm looking for quotes from people, it's really easy just to go to these articles and try to find those right away. Okay, so now the next thing I need to do, and we can bring this one full screen now, is as I'm writing this, quote someone who admires him and has researched him. So I should have a quote here, okay? And then over here, I should have some basics about his life. What are some basics? Okay, basics would be, what is he best known for? And then um, B, and this should be lined up. So we can see that usually the outline is automatic, um, but in this sense, sometimes uh, it doesn't always work that way. Um, and it should be, the A should be, the B should be lined up underneath the A here, okay? Uh, the next would be, um, affecting science, okay? So, uh, the next thing I would, how I would explain is major, what are his major, um, inventions? major inventions were, and I would have examples. I would give examples, right? Um, and for some reason, let's see, let's see if they give us an outline. Usually there's an outline uh, template, and it looks like this isn't uh, letting me do that in the way. So here I would have, in, uh, yeah, it's, it's auto, it's doing it automatically for me. So I want to stop that automatic thing. And I want to be able to, underneath this, um, put my own spacing. Yeah, it just keeps auto it. So let's see, invention uh, number one and its importance. Don't give up. When the computer does something odd, don't give up. Okay, don't, don't say, well, that's too weird and I can't figure it out. Just don't give up. Just continue on. Continue doing what you need to do. Okay. Um, so then you have this here and you can have invention number two. It's importance. Okay. Oh, see, now I hit the capital. I hit caps lock. And that's what happens when you hit cap lock, caps lock. And then you just erase it and you go back. 
all fine. Convention number two and its importance, and you do that here. And so the way you're looking at this is this is really your um, first and second paragraph, right? So then I'm getting into the next part of my essay. Every time you have a letter, that letter should be a paragraph. So inside that, I should have at least five points that I want to make, right? There should be five things here because with every single number, the number correlates to a sentence. That's the rule. So the more thing, the more numbers you have underneath the letter, that shows what the point of is in the paragraph. So in number C, I would say, um, what was Galileo Galilei's childhood like? And the reason why I'm doing that is because as we went to our reference point, remember, here in Plato, I think it was the um, Smithsonian, his revolution of us ushers in a modern astronomy. But you can see the Stanford Encyclopedia was very thorough when it was talking about his childhood um, and in Padua, 400 years ago, he um, discovered a telescope. Um, he talked about it as a spyglass. So that invention, okay, uh, all of these things that he's talking about today and his effect on space can be de um, directly have an influence on someone like Elon Musk and Tesla and um, the SpaceX program and NASA and the US government Space Force. So what you wanna do is look at history, of course, in the past, and you can look at the first of something like Galileo's telescope. But then by the time you're finished with your essay, you're really taking a look at the lasting legacy of someone. This should really be indented further. I don't know why it's fighting me, but maybe it will stay there. So then this next part here, what was his childhood like? So I would talk about, you know, be specific. And where would I get the specifics? From the Smithsonian Magazine or from my Edmentum uh, lessons. So um, day he was born. Um, how did he get interested? in science. What was his specialty? Obviously, right? Space, stars, right? Um, what did people of his day think about him? I mean, if you think about how many years ago it was and they're still writing about him, he obviously had a huge impact, okay? Um, what did his family think? Sometimes people were branded as freaks when they did something unusual and different for their time, right? What does his family think about his interest? Right? All right. So if I'm going to write a paragraph on his childhood, what you need to start to do is chunk your information, chunk it, right? And now I'm going to start to think about his teen years, okay? describe his teen years. We know that back in the day, teens were considered um, different, right? Teens, um, teens were considered adults, not like today where we um, don't consider you adult until the age of 21 or something like that. So you're gonna describe his teen years here, okay? And then you carry on with building your outline. So if you don't have an outline, you don't really have a roadmap to write a paper. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get you to go down this path of understanding. I need an outline, okay? You need to kind of walk through if you're focused on a person, 
You're going to talk about their childhood, their teen years, their adult years, their legacy. So I would have numbers here, teen years. Again, I would focus on um, what were the inventions of his day. Right? Usually people got married back in the day in their teen years. Um, what were his inventions during this time? Now, you can see my, I'm not writing in full sentences. It's meant to be questioning. And when you write, you're answering the question. Where do I get the answer? I read the articles. I do the research. Inventions during this time. Um, did he marry? Was there social stigma? Unusual, right? because he's like an Einstein figure, it's, it's a big deal. So the more robust your outline is, the easier it is to write your paper. If you don't have an outline, you're just kind of winging it. So I sat with some of you in quarter one and I asked you a lot of questions. I was asking you about your topic and I was asking you, what do you think about this? And what does that mean? And can you give me more detail? And the more detail you have, the more rich your paper is. Okay. So sometimes outlines say add detail. Add details about his teen years. There might be other people who were alive at that time who had similar thoughts and were on their own path to discovery, whatever that was, right? So if I'm doing a paragraph on childhood, paragraph on his teen years, the next paragraph I would have, right, would be a paragraph on his adulthood. Right? And so you can see how this would be. And so no matter what I'm doing, if I'm describing an event, either the American Revolution, I would be doing a paragraph on the beginning, a paragraph on the middle paragraph on the end and a paragraph on the legacy. These kinds of things for research. And I would definitely have um, simultaneously, I would be working on the work cited page in an MLA format. That's what I would be doing. Okay. So these two pieces come together um, in a research paper. Simultaneously, you need a title. Another way to do the title page would be to go to File, New, Document, and then you're going to make a title page. Okay. And the way we do title pages would be to um, You would write title page and you would put your last name, so whatever your last name is, title page, Chestone for the capstone project. And once again, I go to format, line spacing should be double spaced, font should be New Times Roman, and it should be 12 font. And then what you always want to do when you're doing a title page is you want to center it. And then you never want it to be at the top. You're going to enter a few times, so it's about the middle of the paper. And then what I do is I grab the same ingredients. See this information? It's all the same. You copy, you go to your title page, and you paste. And you're going to want to center all of that information. Center. Right? And it, usually it's class and topic. Some people put the title, whatever they're studying. So if it's high school diploma slash world studies capstone, and then you would have the date. So the same form, this would be a title page. So one of the ingredients anyone in quarter two can start working on right away would be um, talking with a table partner about what you're interested in, depending on the subject you're studying. Hopefully there are two or more of you taking world studies second quarter. That was our goal so that you guys can work together in little groups. 
Um, everyone should be doing their own capstone unless you're working with a partner. Three people can't work together. But it's really useful to have folks kind of have a thought partner together, right? It's really important. It's useful. And being able to have appointment times with your teacher is another good way to do it, uh, where you can just brainstorm with them your interests in world studies, geography, revolution, industrial revolution, the enlightenment, um, scientific revolution, American revolution, so many revolutions. Yes, you have freedom of choice on what you're going to study, but you still need a title page. Everybody needs it and still need an outline. Everybody needs it. You still need a work cited page. Everybody needs it. These are the ingredients for a capstone project if it's a research paper. If you're doing um, a capstone, there are some choices. This is kind of an idea of how you can do it, but basically you need all the same ingredients, right? You need an outline, you need a title page, you need uh, the same ideas would be here in the capstone project. So if I'm doing a capstone project, I would still need to have the MLA style. I would still use my uh, MLA here. I can paste that information, student's name, teacher, class, and date. Still have MLA style here. And then in my first, I would say, I would introduce the topic, right? This, this is an objective, but in my first uh, paragraph, introduce the topic. And then in my slide deck, there's something called notes. It's always at the bottom here. So in my notes section, this is what you're telling people. This would be the same outline as your essential question. So when you're doing your presentations, explain what you're trying to talk about. So even if you are um, discussing English 4 and you're talking about the authors or you're talking about um, soccer and you're explaining about the World Cup, it doesn't matter what your topic is. You still need to write in the notes section. Um, this would be the, the words that you're going to say but it's not what's going to be on the slide. So what you have on the slide should be bullet points and a picture. Three bullet points, very basic, not full sentences, not punctuation, but you're going to have a picture. If I take this picture from the website, then I need to cite my source. Okay. Um, so if I'm going to add a picture here, depending on revolution. And I want to add another picture to the side here. One thing I could do is go to insert and then I want to go online to um, search the web. And then images will come up on the side here. So I have to choose my topic. If I choose revolution, in general. A lot of things will come up, usually American Revolution, it's the fastest thing that comes up. But if we go back to the Age of Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution, it can be more specific. And then you'll get a bunch of pictures that um, are pertaining to the cotton gin and um, Eli Whitney refrigerators, the printing press, um, the invention of the car, how it changed people, different things like that. And what I can do is just grab by clicking and dropping it into my slide. Now, once it's in my slide, I can't just leave it there, right? So if I click on this picture, I can note where that came from. It's always good to cite your source. Where did this come from, this picture in particular? So sometimes it's important to get where you got that from. So you can put under here, Google stock images. That's always important where you got that from. 
um, explain how the enlightenment affected inventions today. What is your essential question? What are you trying to study? What's the point, right? The second would be, as you can see, introduce your topic, introduce your topic. This rubric is for you to understand how we're going to be grading you. Um, but it's this is particular to this particular assignment. But you should have, in addition, right, some guidelines, right? You should include um, an outline. You should have a beginning, a middle, and a conclusion to your slides. How do I do that? There's a little plus right here. Okay. Introduce your topic, then um, middle should be according to your outline. Should follow your outline. Even if you do a slide presentation, you need a roadmap. You need something that you're trying to achieve here. So what what's your focus? And then I would use bullet points, right? Gives you like an outline form here. Idea one, idea two, and idea three. Remember that you're not gonna be reading this, right? Folks in the audience are gonna be seeing it. So your, your biggest plan here is to make this as big as possible so that the person in the back row can see what you're talking about. That's the main idea. And then on this side, I would always insert a photo, right? And then I would cite the source. Where is this photo coming from? Okay. With invention came pollution. With invention came city crowding because folks from the countryside moved to the cities, you know, things like that, basic. And then in your notes, this is where you would have almost an entire paragraph, like in a research paper, that's what you would be speaking. But the slide presentation just is for the audience to see a visual. Um, some people use videos. Um, some people just use bullet points and they speak it. So if one of the conclusions, one of the results of invention and industrial revolution was pollution, city crowding, crime. So obviously those things were results and they're all negative, but there's also positives. So I might have another slide that says positives of having that invention, doing these invention advancements would be um, shorter time preparing meals because we had things like refrigerators. We had um, electric stoves and electric lights at night. So there were less um, oil fires and house fires because electricity changed. I don't know. It's what you would like to discuss. You can be as specific as you like. And then you should have a middle slide. You should have a conclusion slide, you can put a data slide, you can have a slide on famous inventors of the era, but the minimum, minimum should be um, 10 slides. And then of course, at the end, you can just drag that to the end, you should have a works cited slide. And this should be done in MLA slide, MLA style again. There's no reason why you can't do the exact same thing you would do in an outline. How does that work? So what I do is just grab these things. I'm going to go ahead and copy. Let's see if I can bring that back up. I'm going to go ahead and paste here. And those are my references. So it's the exact same thing. You're just using a lot more visuals in a slide presentation. And I would have all of my notes down here of things that I was going to talk about. I would definitely have um, a slide where there's a quote. Um, 
And if you have quotes about that, about Galileo, uh, definitely the last slide should be a works cited slide. And then you can even have a Q&A slide that's useful as well. If I'm looking for a quote on uh, Galileo Galilei, um, astronomers wish never to raise their eyes from those pages. Isn't it amazing that we know what he wrote? Um, so I can go ahead and copy that and put that here. And obviously I would want to discuss this and I would want it to be really, really, really big so that folks in my, the back of my class could see that. And then I would want to cite the source. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put it in my notes section. And then what I would be discussing is um, this quote shows and this is where the students understanding and analysis comes in about Galileo and Aristotle and the things they thought about in science okay so that would be an example you don't have to use that quote you can use other quotes so that's why you have a lot of latitude um, but the ingredients don't change right you need to have quotes, you need to have an outline, you need to understand how you'll be graded. The rubric is there. I'm gonna put it um, on the last page. You can have a Q&A slide. Q&A just means questions and answers where if, if your teacher encourages peer engagement, then peers can ask you what you thought was the most important invention and why, and why that's of interest to you. But this is capstone. Capstone is meant to be worked on over a five week period. Um, definitely cannot be done overnight. You should have a title page, you should have an outline, and you most certainly should have uh, a works cited page, okay? So I hope this video helps you. Um, I know that I will be in classes this week to help you all out as you get along on your next uh, portion in quarter two. All right, I'll be seeing you all soon, okay? Take care.